Hi, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for your next BB&J card class. And today I'll be using our transparent set called Lush and Lavish, combined with a four inch Inchy Arts Art Square to combine several different mediums on the Art Square surface. So it's one of the reasons I really love working on the Art Squares is that I can put lots of different mediums, watercolors, without any pilling of the surface. So this is a look at the four inch Art Square. And I'm going to stamp this brush stroke stamp from Penny Black onto the art square. And I'm using Memento Peanut Brittle ink. So essentially I just wanted to pick an ink that was a fairly light color because I'm going to paint over the top. And this will just be my guide as to where to add my colors. So I'm stamping this kind of going off the edge on the art square. And I'm just going to press down here, make sure that it completely stamped since I'm using a pretty light color I use quite a bit of pressure and I'm going to use Sakura Koi watercolors the pocket field sketch box and I'm just setting up the little palette to do some mixing I'm just using water and a watercolor brush and the surface of the art square is a really great surface for watercoloring it actually acts a lot like a hot press watercolor paper and because it is very smooth it's easy to get a nice stamped image onto the surface. So I'm just adding my color directly on top of the leaves and I'm painting it where it is stamped and I'm keeping those light areas fairly white so I'm trying not to add a lot of color on there. If it bleeds over that's okay but it helps me to keep a highlight in my painting, which I'm finding with watercolors is tricky to do, but really adds a lot to the painting when there are some nice areas of light. You can see once the entire leaf is wet, I'm dropping in more color, so to darken it up. And I'm adding that darker color primarily towards the bottom of the leaf, so closest to where the stem would be, and that will keep that area being the darkest. And here I just wanted to show you, I like to mix a lot of my own colors, um, especially for greens. So here I'm putting down a combination of blues onto the palette. And then I'll also put some yellow. And then I'll just kind of cross these together. And this will give me a nice variety of greens that I can paint on the leaves. So I'm pulling more from the blue section towards the bottom of the leaf and the yellows towards the top. And then they'll mix together and create a nice olive green. And again, just dropping in more color and allowing them to mix and blend. Here I'm just mixing another color, so combining some yellow, Also some pinkish red, and then more of a true red. And then I'll mix those together and use those to paint the leaves as well. So I just pull from different parts of that mixture for my lights and my darks. The first step is getting that first layer on and then going back and dropping more color into the wet area. Here you can see I'm doing another one of the green leaves, putting more of the bluish tones towards the bottom of the leaf and the yellow towards the top. You'll also see that the other leaves are darkened up, so these watercolors do tend to dry quite a bit lighter than after the first application. So I go back and add darker color once they've dried. You can wait for them to dry naturally or you can go in and dry them with a heat tool and then add more color on top. And here you can see where I'm just dropping in some more color and the, the difference there between the areas of the light and the dark. So I'll put that color on and then go back and blend it towards the top with more water. Now once I had painted all my leaves, I'm using a color pencil, this one's from Faber-Castell Faber Design Memory Craft, just to darken up sort of the branch or stem area. So I've just sharpened it and then I'm coloring right on top. 
sorry for my head there in the bottom. And you can see that the art square can take all these different kinds of mediums. It's really nice for mixed media. Now I'm going to mix a color for the background. And I find this is really nice to give something kind of an antique paper aged look. So I add some of that yellow and then add the white to that to really lighten it up. And then I'll paint this onto my background and around the leaves partially as well. And I'm just off camera here for a second, but I promise I'll move it up here so you can see. Sorry about that. So I'm just painting that around. I did make sure that the leaves that I had painted were already dry before adding this. And that just helps um, that it doesn't blend too much and pull some of that color from the leaves out into the background. If you painted the background and got close while they were still wet, it'd be easier for if, if a wet area on the background touched a wet leaf for that color to start spreading. So just like to make sure it's dry between applications. So I put down the color that I mixed and then I add water to blend. I'm going to splatter a little brown paint onto the background. And then I decided to darken that up even more. So adding some paint and then applying water along that edge to blend it into the rest of the background. And we'll get this corner a little bit as well. So another medium I'm going to add to this to add some shadowing beh behind the leaves. This is a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft, Craft Pit Pastel Pencil. And I'm just coloring that on one side of the leaves and then blending it with my finger. This creates a shadow on the leaf and just gives the piece, even though it's one layer, it gives us a, gives us a lot of great dimension. So I finished with my art square, and now I have a piece of just Canson 140 pound watercolor paper. I'm putting a layer of just plain water onto this, and then I'm going to add watercolors to create this really loose and free flowing background. I'm mostly just painting around the outer edges because the art square is gonna go in the center of this piece, so I don't need to worry about covering the entire thing. And I'm just dropping in lots of different colors. This is kind of a fun setup for any type of card done with the art squares. That you can paint your art square with the four inch ones. It creates a really nice vocal piece on its own and it just needs a small border around the edge. And you could pull those same colors that you used on the art square into a loose, free flowing watercolor background. And it will all coordinate. So just keep dropping in those colors, getting it lighter and darker, but working while the paper is still wet so that they blend and on their own. And to complete this card, I just simply mounted the art square using dimensional adhesive and then added it to my note card. Thank you so much for watching. For details and more information, visit the Penny Black website, www.pennyblackink.com, and here's a list of all the supplies used on today's card.